this video we're going to cover how to take advantage of those short forehands that you're getting in a match to either hit a nice approach shot or a winner. To make it easier for you we're going to break it down into three sections. It's read, react and respond. Now read is all about recognizing that the ball is coming short so you have enough time to set up. Now there are two main ways that you're going to actually get a short ball. Now the first way is when you actually force your opponent to give you a short ball. This is by hitting a, a deep shot or a wide shot or perhaps you've hit a hard shot at your opponent where you've jammed them up and you're expecting that short ball, you're anticipating the short ball and that's one way that you can almost read and, and prepare for the short ball before it's actually even happened. Now the second way is your opponent actually hits a bad shot. So they're in the right position, they've set up correctly, but their shot hasn't been executed uh, properly and they actually give you a short ball unexpectedly. Now for that you'd have to react to that short ball simply by watching the qualities of that ball. So you have to judge that the ball is going to come in a little bit shorter. So what are the qualities of the short ball? Most of the time a short ball will be hit with either a lot of topspin or excessive topspin so it will dip quite early. A ball that hasn't been hit with much pace so the racket head going through the contact point has been quite slow or slower than a normal shot or they've actually opened up the strings and just hit us a slice or a nudge shot and you'll see that that ball is coming with less pace and it's going to land short. You can judge a lot by the sound that the ball makes. So the sound of your opponent's racket, it, whether it's been hit like a, a full sound, like a really hard hit, you'll be able to hear. Whereas a, a topspin sounds a lot of a thinner, it's more of a thin sound uh, and you'll be able to, to judge just by the way that ball's been hit. Also if they frame the ball, you'll also be able to hear it and sometimes those balls also land quite short. Now it's much easier to read if the ball is going to your left or to your right. If I'm on the baseline it's much easier for me to read if it's going to my backhand or to my forehand. But the perception of depth is something that's much harder to learn and much harder to train. But it's something that we work on if we want to be able to capitalize on those short balls. Now in this drill Simon's going to feed balls to me with different feeds. So he's going to vary the top spin slice and hard hit and I'm going to have to call out whether it's a short ball or a deep ball and try and get to it. Short. Now I can tell quite a lot by the way Simon takes back his racket, whether he's taking it back quite far or if he's quite close to contact. I can straight away judge whether the ball is going to go short, even sometimes before he hits the ball. Short. Deep. Short. Now there I recognized that Simon opened up his racket quite early. I knew he wasn't going to be able to hit a hard shot. I knew the ball was going to travel slow through the air and I was already prepared to go forward. That's why I called the short ball. Now ideally you want to call out deep or short before the ball has crossed the net. This will give you enough time to prepare for the ball when you get there. Now one of the biggest problems that players do on this type of short ball is because you have extra time, because you feel like the ball isn't a ball that's going to put you in any danger, you relax and your intensity drops and you actually get to that ball very late when it actually starts to drop. Another thing is obviously you're not going to get close enough to the net so the quicker you react the more intense you are with your movement the quicker you can get closer to the net the more angles you're going to have the more chances you have of hitting a harder flatter shot. The, the more the ball drops the lower it gets the more topspin you're going to have to apply the less chance you have of hitting that hard shot you're going to have to use placement on it so you're going to, you're going to lose your, uh, your chance to actually attack the ball. So what you want to do is be as intense as possible with your movement, try and close the gap between you and the ball to prepare early and make a little small adjustment steps in the process. Another very common thing that players do is they see the short ball and they blindly run to it and they almost overrun it, which, is, which then causes them to be in trouble. So they almost put themselves into trouble. They put themselves close to that ball because they think, oh, it's a short ball. I have to get further, further in. I have to go and get it. And then the ball bounces up at them and they're not prepared to hit the proper shot. So those are the two main problems you would have in missing that ball. So we're going to deal with them right now. React is all about the movement to the ball your footwork and the stances that you're going to use for the shot. Now that you've recognized that the ball is coming short, now it's all about that reacting and moving up to that short ball. Now there are many different types of short balls that you'll receive. You'll receive some that are higher, some low ones, some wider into the tram lines and some more in the middle of the court. 
you'll receive different types of spins and you'll also be moving to that short ball from different locations on the court. But to keep it very simple, we'll cover two main ways that we can move up to that short ball. So one would be if it's a drop shot, so this is where you literally just sprint to the ball. You have to get there as quick as possible because if you don't just sprint, you're not going to get there in time, you're not going to be able to hit a shot. The second way is when you have time. This is when you have to turn your shoulders, you have to generate the power from your body, you have to turn, you have to get there, but you have to be in a, in a ready position to hit an actual shot rather than just making the ball or placing it. Um, and therefore you're gonna have to use a different kind of movement for that shot. So if we cover firstly the one where we're actually gonna turn, where we have a bit more time, it all starts with that split step. So if you've uh, hit your shot, you're waiting for your opponent to make contact with their ball and you do a split step. Now you've recognized that the ball is coming short, depending on where it is on the court, you're gonna react differently. But if you can and if you have time, that first step will be a pivot step around your right leg with your left foot. So notice that Alex is taking that step forward. At the same time, he's turning his left shoulder sideways onto the net, which is gonna engage the trunk and get his upper body ready for the shot. Now from here, I have a choice. I either do side steps, if the ball is gonna come a little bit deeper, so I can turn and side step to the ball and then hit the shot. This is probably when I would use uh, something called the pivot step, so this is when I pivot around my left foot and hit the shot. For the second option, I can pivot again, so I'm putting my left foot forward. This is again the more aggressive option. Now if I'm defending, I'll be pivoting back. If I'm being aggressive, if I'm attacking, if it's a short ball, I'm putting the left foot forward. Again, I'm turned, but now I can use the crossover step. I use the crossover step to get to the ball, and then later I can use the different footwork patterns during the shot that we're gonna cover uh, later on in the video. Now Alex, why would we not use a side step, but a crossover step? Now a crossover step allows us to cover a lot more distance. We're very limited with a side step because we're always limited by that front foot. So we can side step only a, a limited uh, length. Whereas a crossover allows us to cover a lot more length because this leg is now moving across over that limiting leg. So it's therefore almost like a running step rather than a side step. So you're gonna, one, be able to cover a lot more ground and also it's actually a little bit quicker. So it, you can actually explode into it a little bit quicker than with the side step. You're, you're never gonna, gonna quite be able to let yourself go with side steps. Side steps are more like adjustment steps. They're not ones that are gonna cover big distances, but they are used to keep yourself sideways and they are very useful in the, the balls that are coming a little bit deeper. Now what would happen if we have a ball around the blue cone or the yellow cone where we actually have to go sideways and forwards at the same time? So here we would definitely use the crossover step because uh, if I use side steps, I'm simply not gonna get there enough. And if I use a side step in that situation, I'm gonna be a little bit too turned. So if I'm side stepping here, I'm now in a closed position to then hit the shot into that direction. So I want to be able to use the crossover step where I'm gonna be going here and then I'm probably gonna be using the outside leg in this situation because as I hit the shot, I'm gonna to have to try and cut back in uh, to the core, otherwise I'm gonna be exposed on that left wing if I'm making the approach. Now Alex, what kind of steps would we use to get to that blue cone? Something that we're gonna make contact with past the, the single sideline into the tram lines. Now again, I'm gonna be pushed out quite wide here. It's a short ball, but I'm pushed out quite wide. So I have two options. I, I, first of all, I'm definitely gonna to have to sprint them and have to get to the ball as quickly as I can. Then I'm gonna have a few adjustment steps where I slow my body down. And at the end, I either use the right to right if I'm actually on balance. So if uh, the ball is not too far away from me, I'm gonna use the right to right. So this is where I sprint, 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 adjust, adjust, adjust right to right, cut into the court. And the second part would be exactly the same, but because the ball is further away from me uh, and, it's, uh, and it's lower, I would maybe use the right to left footwork where I'm using the right leg and then I'm continuing my left and then I'm, I'm going into the court. So that option, again, 
it, you're going to be uh, exposed a little bit more because you're not going to be able to continue moving into the court within your movement so you're going to have to be really quick once you finish the shot but it's an option if the ball is short so this is how it looks so once again we have a sprint if it's a drop shot if the ball's slightly deeper and you don't have to move too wide you've got the side steps so you've got that pivot side step then you can hit the shot if the ball's slightly shorter you can then use the pivot step crossover step to cover more ground with that crossover step if the ball's slightly wider you can then have that sprint that then turns into a side step or you can have the sprint into right to right or right to left <laughs> 